Thank you so much for inviting me to your greenhouse to learn a little bit about your operation here and hopefully take something home. So I'm curious where you guys started. How did you get into this industry? We started in, <laughs> in our high school greenhouse in Swan Valley High School. Mm -hmm. um, it started with a, a kids won't know now a ninth hour, which was actually an after school a detention. The science teacher said you can go in and clean out these empty. Um, they had greenhouses that weren't being used. They, I think they had a chicken coop. Yeah. They made a chicken coop out of them, and the chickens were gone. So they said for the him to go in and. Uh, the phone's ringing. We still got to do business. They, they said for him to go in and uh, clean it up and get it ready to make it into a greenhouse again. So he started there. Okay. I, I really didn't have anything to do with that one, but I would go in and help him. Mm. Just as his girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. And look at where it's gotten you. It's awesome what you guys have created. What I have in my hand is a general purpose soilless medium. So uh, greenhouse operations across uh, the planet at this point uh, rarely use actual field soil, like uh, something you'd go out in the field with a shovel and dig. Um, it's, uh, it's a funny thing to say, but soil in our industry is basically obsolete. So we use, it's not a, a man-made soil, but it's a man-made mix of natural ingredients. So what I have in my hand here is a general purpose type of a medium. Um, so this would be um, something that we would use on an everyday basis for uh, semi-mature plants right through uh, the finished product when it goes on our bench for, for sale. Um, what's in this bin, this is a little bit, a little bit different texture. So this is a very fine texture. Uh, this is intended to germinate seeds only. Um, the, the ingredients, what you see, all these different colors and specks and stuff in here is uh, the, the base of it is peat moss. There's some vermiculite, which is uh, a volcanic rock that um, holds water. And then there's some fine perlite, which provides porosity and airspace uh, to the germinating seeds. And it's, a, it's a present in this too. It's just in, uh, it's just coarser, you know. Um, it's, it's designed for a different stage of development in, mm -hmm. in a plant's life. So when we germinate seeds, uh, we use the germ uh, germination medium, and this is what it, uh, the next stage of where this goes to. So when you buy a plant at a garden center and you have something like a big tomato plant, this is how it starts its life in this teeny little uh, space. This, this, this is 512, yeah. technically 512 plants it can hold. So we figured out how many we need for a crop of, say, marigolds. And then we figure out how many seeds we need and then how many flats of these to get to the finished product of marigolds. The, the advantage to this is that when our transplanters are transplanting into the finished um, container, like the, the cell pack that when you, when you bought that tomato at a garden center and you buy three of them, they've been all um, sorted and graded and individually planted. So it's somebody's job to actually, when you buy a flat of flowers, somebody touched every single one of those seedlings to um, put them into that flat. And uh, they, they, they pick them out by size, um, they, they, by size and vigor and the health of the plant. And, and when we transplant a flat, all the seedlings match that go into the flat. So this is the first stage, this is where it starts. There's nothing in here except soil and Jennifer, uh, she's a seed guru, she is going to show you how we, uh, <laughs> how, we, how we plant the seeds, which is surprising to a lot of people because most commercial operations, we don't plant the seed by hand. There's a machine that uh, does it. Ours is an older- Lar Larger things we do by hand. We do melons and pumpkins, uh, squash, will be hand sewn into a bigger flat just because they're, they're very large and they grow pretty quickly. So I don't need all the care that these guys need, but. Smaller seed, it's, it's, um, it's so uniformity, one thing I should back up, in a green, any greenhouse operation, one of the, the most important factors is uniformity. So when th this seed is sown, it's, it, 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 it's all placed at the same depth on the soil, it's all delivered at the same, um, at the same speed, and it's, it, it creates uniform plants for our transplanters. So they don't have to spend as much time sorting through let's say a teeny little transplant versus a big tall transplant. When we transplant a flat, we want them to all be exactly the same. 
So, so to these are that, these are peppers. Yeah, you can achieve that easier uh, mechanically than you can with with uh, human sewing. You know, this so that's is going to be a little loud. <laughs> <laughs> so this is a needle vacuum. It takes a second to warm up. I'm so sorry. I should have warmed it up, but that's okay. It will get there. So I just um, this is a pan. It has a vibrator in there that shapes them. when it hits a certain spot. It doesn't have a flat there, so now it's... it's really cool. And we'll put a flat on so you can see it. There's tubes that they go down. And there's different size needles for different seeds. So this needle is correct for um, the pepper seeds. And there's finer needles for, say, um, celery or something. Some of the, some of the annual... Uh, but some bounce out, so they may not all be in the home. So even though you're not putting them directly in there, you still have to be here, present, moving them around. Yes, and, yes. This, yeah. this would, at some point, it might shove off the end, or it's going <laughs> to stop and just keep filling the same <laughs> hole. So it does need a human operator still. Can you do other trays other than this? Yes. Yeah. We could do directly into this, which is where these go eventually, but we could, we could actually raise this machine to put this through if we needed to. And mm -hmm. so the seed count or the tray count, we, we have a 512 tray, but um, that's sp specific to a particular uh, operation. So some operations, that's going to make a smaller smaller seedling, but it uh, condenses more seedlings per square foot, where other operations uh, prefer different sizes. So um, the next size flat, I think, is a 288. So what that is, is 288 um, seedlings in the same amount of space, but that creates a bigger flat and it has a little more flexibility in how you care for it because it has a bigger volume of soil in the in the cell awesome so we technically never change trays we just oh. adapt our count to that tray just yeah. <laughs> we don't want to remove all this stuff every time yeah it's very fine-tuned it's a little crooked uh our floor so we have it adjusted and it's like just perfect so once it's perfect we don't mess with, mess that. with it and actually i don't know if this one can do that flat I think the golden and Lawson can do that, or you can put a whole flat okay. through a high yeah, So this machine, when, when she's running full speed with it, she can do about 500 seeds uh, every 30 seconds or so. Uh, and, and this is considered slow by industry standards, so there's machines that operate fast faster than that. Um, yeah, ours is actually fit for our size. Like, we don't have the room for a bigger one, but they have they have ones that you can sit in. Like, they have a control chair. Oh, wow. And they can water the flat in, and they can put this in flat through, and then um, some of them... Uh, some of them, the operators the, in the... Yeah, other, it would be as big as this whole entire building. Oh. So, so it's going to... They're, they're going to uh, plant the seed. There's a machine that puts the label on it. There's a machine that covers if you need... If it's a type of seed that needs to be covered, um, it it's covers it with vermiculite, um, and it puts it on a conveyor, and another... That will move to, through a conveyor to another part where someone will take that off and put it either on a bench or on a, in a germination chamber. Okay. Um, so yeah, as you're filling these then, because definitely tomatoes, peppers, for most of us, we're starting them right now, right? Um, what happens next? You have your tray full. Where do you go with that? Or what do you do next with that tray to help it germinate? So the, the next stage of development, the very next thing that these have to get watered, watered in. So again, uniformly, we want to saturate those little cubes of soil so they're all exactly the same amount of, of, of wetness, and that mm -hmm. takes place in the, in the greenhouse. So we can go in yeah. there and take a look.
So the next, the next stage is going to be on our germination bench. So um, let's take a look and see what's going on over here. So you can see this is covered with plastic. This, uh, one of the most important things is uniform moisture. These little cells dry out super fast, so we don't want any seeds. We don't want one cell to dry out and the rest of them to be wet. So if you, I don't know if you can see it with your camera, but if you look close, we have just a couple babies starting to come mm -hmm. on here. And, and this uh, germination can occur really rapidly depending on the, the variety. So um, this is something that has to be checked every single day sometimes twice a day we check for, for germination. Uh, so not, the seeds don't all germinate at the exact same minute, but they generally ger germinate um, in this system within 24 hours of each other. So, and the seed is very, very expensive. So what we want to do is make sure that we get the maximum amount of germination before we pull it out of this area. Um, so we might check this like we just showed you with a couple seedlings that are starting to germinate, but that's not quite ready because we haven't, we don't have 100% germination or or even 90% germination. So that'll stay in there till tomorrow. Tomorrow when we check this, it's most likely um, the rest of those seeds will be germinated and we'll pull that out to the, the next stage. So this runs warmer, this bench is insulated and it's covered with plastic and it's got 24 hours of lighting. Um, the, the very next stage of seed seedling germ, uh, development requires a little bit cooler temperature. So that comes out of here and goes on another part of the bench with a different color of light. Uh, so the, the color of light and the quality of light also has an effect on how rapidly these germinate. And uh, germination is only the first stage of seedling development. So we have to still make that plant grow and get it uh, ready for transplanting. And that's what happens with the other color of light in the, in the next stage. These guys are also um, scheduled at the earliest seeds, which are usually, you know, take the longest time. So as we go along every week, we germinate something different or sow something different. So like right now, I just finished our first crop of petunias. Or awesome. Not, or petunias and peppers. So that's what's under here. A lot of herbs, because they take a really long time. They're very <laughs> tiny. Yeah, they do. So we were talking about, you know, how to get these seed re seedlings ready for transplant. And there's uh, multiple ways that we do that. So. I mentioned several times now uniformity. So if we have a, a, a marigold, for instance, that's a very vigorous plant and a petunia that's not an extremely vigorous plant, we still have to be able to transplant those within the same window of time. Um, so how we do that is by manipulating per variety, the, um, for, we manipulate fertility, we manipulate uh, the temperatures, um, sometimes we manipulate the hormones of the plant. So, so for instance, if I if my marigolds were coming on too too fast and I was waiting for my petunias to catch up, um, I would cool I would cool those marigolds down. I would put them in an, another greenhouse where the temperature may be 10 or 15 degrees cooler. At the same time, I would put the petunias in a warmer greenhouse and I would increase the fertility so I could make those plants grow faster. If the marigolds, for instance, uh, didn't slow down and we needed we needed them to stop to wait for the, the rest of the uh, plants to catch up, we would manipulate the hormones. And we do that with chemical growth regulators. And what a growth regulator is, is a, a hormone inhibiting compound that we can spray on plants in specific ways to, to make them respond in specific ways. So uh, very commonly in greenhouse operations, what we're trying to do is stop stem el elongation so we can use a, a hormone blocker that causes the cells in the stems of plants to, to, to lack the ability to uh, elongate for just a very short period of time, like 10 days. And, and oftentimes that 10 days is all we need to, to slow that plant down for the rest of the things to, to be able to catch up to it. So it's, it's not unusual, very, very common practice in greenhouses uh, across the planet to, to be able to um, to maintain this uniformity that we keep talking, talking mm -hmm. about. Too. So um, the next, you know, the final thing to sort of understand is this: this is live as soon as that seed is planted. Whether you know, it's, some of this stuff starts in January or February, and it uh, requires a human being to be in attendance all the time. So our greenhouses are alarmed for temperature. So uh, can you imagine, like tonight, it's going to be 18 degrees. So if I have a heat failure and I'm home sleeping and I don't know about it, tomorrow morning is going to be quite a disaster when I get here because this greenhouse will freeze solid. So 
the computer system monitors the temperature in the environment and it's linked through our phones that um, no matter where from, from the moment Jennifer plants the first seed until the last one goes out the door our cell phones are tracking this greenhouse operation continuously so no matter where we're at um, if there's a crisis we know about it uh, sort of one of the drawbacks of being a greenhouse family in springtime is you can't really go too far away so we have to be close enough to be able to get here and make those repairs if that's what's needed or at least you know figure out what the situation is um, we have had situations where the power goes out and we don't have furnaces we don't have heat uh, not all the greenhouse but maybe let's just say we have two running then we if we can't get the power back on out of our control um we have to haul everything out usually it, yeah. there's been times where it's we've, everything you see and more has had to get hauled into the building or a place where uh, well, the generator heat. can heat because yeah. ge we don't have a whole uh, preparation generator we just we have a, a wheeled one that we have to take from place to place <laughs> so we we have to figure that out that's all part of it so this is the life of a small greenhouse operation so a big a big a big large-scale operation adds the capacity to generate electricity for everything in an emergency uh, what Jennifer and I have had to do is um, you know if you're really desperate and your life's counting on it yeah we uh, we place our generator in one area heat that greenhouse up as hot as we can get it shut it back down move it to the next greenhouse turn it on heat everything up uh, it's, it's not fun it's not what we like to do but it, uh, it goes the same with heating like uh, today's a pretty gray day so all the lighting is needed but if it's very sunny out and everybody thinks that's a perfect day in the greenhouse it's actually can be hard on the plants too you have to check watering constantly and these guys will fry they'll actually sizzle right up so we come out and we have to cover all this we, we use newspaper a lot the newspaper is very handy um you can lay it down and get it wet and it'll cling to the plastic and it, it uh, protects it lately we've been using tarps because it's a little bit a little bit more efficient Coverage. we can cover more more area well, uh, not we use <laughs> insulation sometimes depending on the greenhouse at one point um when jen and i were germinating a lot of perennial seed we had to do it in the middle of the summer so um this type of uh, system is necessary but it was so hot during the day that we actually had to cover we covered our benches with insulation in the day and and then we grew the plants at night so we we flipped the day and the night for the plants they didn't know the difference so when we covered the whole bench with insulation it was essentially dark under the under the insulation and it was dark all day long but it kept our seedlings cool then at nighttime we we lit the whole greenhouse up so we just we just sort of flipped the 12 12 hour intervals on the plants and um there's a lot of things like that that we can manipulate in a greenhouse so the plants didn't know the difference but we were able to germinate the seedlings at a time that normally you wouldn't be able to and that's again how greenhouses operate we we are doing a lot of a lot of manipulation to the plants because um the natural system outside isn't isn't cooperative for that type of growth so that's what that's what we do indoors to, to get everything ready for the time when it is uh, good to plant you know yeah. So, um, I don't know if you want to walk down here or you want me to bring it up, but yeah, I can show you the next more. stage of like what they look like when they come out okay. when they have, you know, when they're just too okay. well. So this, okay. this is just a couple flats I did today to show you the difference. Uh, so these guys have not been watered in yet and they will join those guys by the end of the day. So I just cover them up because we get drips in here. It's an old uh, glass house and a lot of plastic and it will drill holes in the seed. So that's that. Um, down here is some guys that came out. Uh, these guys, believe it or not, are ready to be out. Is that Portulaca? Yeah. Yep, that's Portulaca or Moss Rose. Um, this is Flowering Kale. That had a little mishap right there, so we'll cover that up. <laughs> uh, Gazanias, Dahlias. Some of, the, some of these just need a little more time than other flowers, so they're the first guys that were sown. Probably very close to the beginning of February. So that's what they look like. So the reason that back in the old days when we first started out, we filled everything by hand. And it was one person's job to, in springtime, all day long, every day, fill flats and pots uh, that we would be able to use for the next day. And when we when we got the machine finally, as you grow, you, you, you need some equipment to make your operation more efficient. And this was one of our first investments. So this machine, um, what we what we create is uniformity. So when this goes, goes through, the it, this 
this fills them all the same depth, it packs it all the same, it has all the same airspace and same volume of soil. So um, the, the benefit of that is in the greenhouse, after this stuff is growing, we have more uniform watering. Our, um, the way that we apply fertilizers and the way that the plants are spaced out and grow, um, all, a lot of it has to do with the amount of soil that's in the pot. So if we have too much in one pot and, and a little bit less soil in the next pot, the one with less soil is going to dry out faster than the one with more soil. So um, we want uniformity when it comes to this. And then we want to be able to have a reservoir for water. So in, in other words, when you buy a, when you buy a, a, a plant and you, you see this little edge around the top, this is specific, a specific depth that that's been filled. So when we actually water this, we catch enough water as a reservoir to be able to penetrate all the way through the pot. So this machine will fill uh, a lot of stuff really fast. And in the world of flats, I think we can probably fill maybe, uh, I'm gonna say 1500 flats an hour. Pots would be more than that because we're filling them 10, 10 or 15 at a time, depending on how we set it up. We can do hanging baskets. You do four and a half inch, three and a half inch, any configuration of um, cell packs like a 72 pack or a 48 pack or a 36 pack. Uh, some of our friends fill their plug trays with these. Um, pretty much every operation has to have a, a, a flat filler. If, if you were to ever tour a greenhouse operation, what you would find is this is a very small flat filler. So this is probably one of the smallest models made, but it works good for us. Uh, some of the bigger operations, uh, they have to fill their hoppers with a bobcat and, uh, you know, and it's a continuous thing. So a lot of the greenhouse operations will start filling all their pots and flats and everything in January. So that job is done. So everything's filled. Everything is covered up and stored in a, in a pole barn and then pulled out as we need it during, during the season. Our machine takes three people to run. Uh, one person feeds it, one person feeds the soil, and one person takes um, the stuff off the other end. But uh, truly, we don't. We don't know how we live without this machine. So uh, that's 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 uh, one of the one of the things that we got to have. It's why we want an operation. And what's funny is that a lot of people don't know that greenhouse operations actually have a machine to um, fill their pots with. This is a Gleason. The story with Gleason is really cool. So this guy worked at a, at a nursery, and uh, this was before this technology existed. And, and he was a guy that was his job was to fill pots, but he was really handy with engineering, and he went home and put a machine together that he thought would work good for what they were doing and brought it to the nursery that he worked at and it worked so well that they founded this company. His idea was that any greenhouse guy would be able to go to the local hardware and get parts for it. So this is something that um, we don't want to have a parts department, a specialty thing where we have to be shut down and wait for a long period of time before our parts get here to fix us. We have to continuously go and stay on our schedule. So he, he designed a machine that most of the parts that would be worn out or breakable, we could get in our own town. And it worked out so well that um, he didn't have to replace any machines and he didn't have to replace any parts. And these things are so well built, they last for so long that he, not, he didn't sell enough of them. Wow. In the end, to stay, to stay in business. So he, so he sold, everybody's got this same machine, but they never, they never break down. It's just minor stuff that needs repair. So um, now the company's back in business and they do help us. Uh, it's amazing is all I can tell you. When we call Gleason, I can just tell them what kind of machine I got. And the guys there know this from memory. They can tell me wow. the parts that I need um, and where to go to get it repaired if I needed to. So... That's our Gleason flat floor. Uh, okay, so thank you so much for letting us tour your greenhouse. I learned a lot. It's so neat to see just on a larger scale how things get done and, and get done by the professionals, right? You guys have been doing this a long time and we're super grateful for you sharing your insight and everything there is to learn. So thank you. And if someone wants to follow you on social media, do you guys have a Facebook? Yeah, Favorite Greenhouse and Floral. Um, it's a super busy, active page. Uh, we answer a lot of questions crazy from all over the planet. Uh, one of the things that we like to do is, is uh, answer questions and solve problems in home gardens. So feel free anytime to call or contact us on our social media. Just a wealth of information here. So right now you can order uh, flower bouquets, but the plant sale won't start till later this spring. So follow their Facebooks for more information. Have a good one, everybody. Thank you. Ha, <laughs> ha,